Ever had an adrenaline rush? It's a mix of emotions all at once. Ever had an adrenaline rush? It's, it's a very intense feeling. Ever had an adrenaline rush? And I'm like, I gotta get me one of these. Ever had an adrenaline rush? Ever had an adrenaline rush? Ever had an adrenaline rush? Longboarding became a uh, big boom on campus where there were longboarders everywhere. And um, I had a friend by the name of James Roden who longboards uh, frequently. And um, it seemed to be a very uh, fun way to meet, you know, other people with that uh, interest and whatnot. And so therefore I decided to borrow my friend's longboard um, and learn how to longboard myself. I first got into longboarding from loving an adrenaline rush. And one day in the summer, I went over to my friend's house and he's like, I'm gonna take you on this trail. And he brought out this bamboo, beautiful longboard he had, and it was big enough for two people to ride tandem. There's something like riding with two people, that's a lot of fun. It's difficult, but it's a lot of fun, especially um, if you guys both ride the same footing. So he's like, why don't you hop on the back? and uh, we'll go on this leisurely ride. I kind of just picked it up from like following what he was doing, and I'm like, I gotta get me one of these. Um, when I first got on my longboard, I was definitely afraid. Um, they tell you to uh, try to find a very flat terrain to ride on when you first get on your board. Um, we had, I, I tried a parking lot, and the terrain was mostly flat, but it did have a couple hills. Brandon looks on as the vehicle Um, the best part about longboarding is, well, for me at the current moment, it gets me from point A to point B very fast. As, as far as a college campus is a great mode of transportation, uh, whereas walking to some classes may take me 10 minutes, it'll take me 5 or 6 minutes on my longboard. Um, coming into school is a great conversation starter, great way to meet new people. Um, oh, you longboard? Yeah, let me tell you about it. Or would you like to learn? More than happy to. To anyone that wants to learn how to longboard, I say to go with it. Um, find a friend who longboards and maybe borrow their board just to see if you like it. Um, there's a ton of information on the internet as far as um, how to start longboarding, how to get comfortable with it. Watch YouTube videos about it. Um, learn about it. Learn different techniques. Uh, try, you know, standing up. Try. Uh, pushing off on a flat surface, try just getting along there. Practice every day. Uh, I have people, I have friends who longboard, but then they have their longboard sitting in the room, and I'm like, why is it still sitting there? They're like, well, I can't learn to get it to um, ride it from class to class to class. And I'm like, you just gotta muscle through it for the first couple weeks. If you're not making it very far, it might not be for you. There's some people that just don't have the balance for it. Um, it does take a bit of coordination. But if you have a little bit, a little bit will go a long way with practice. Um, you kind of have to understand that falling is a possibility, it's a reality, and every time I step on my board, I expect to fall at least once, um, just so that when it does happen, it's not a shock, it's not a surprise, and you just get up and you just keep going. But um, I definitely enjoy longboarding regardless of the falls. The way my mind works is before I do anything athletic with coordination, I have to think through the steps before I do it. It usually doesn't come naturally for me. So I kind of like think about the flow of everything before I start and then I just kind of ready myself and when I feel like I can mentally go through all the steps in my head, then whenever I'm ready I just start and hope for the best. There are stereotypes that all longboarders smoke weed. I am a longboarder that doesn't smoke weed, so I'm against that stereotype. I think I'm looked upon much more harshly when I wipe out. Even though I'm doing something that most people would wipe out doing, it's like, oh, you wiped out because you're a girl. Like, you don't know how to ride a longboard. Like, people say, oh, it's, it's a lazy man's thing, and you're just riding, so what kind of effort are you putting in? I'm like, all right, you kick yourself up one of the hills that we have here on campus and tell me how you like it. Because, I mean, it, literally you're pedaling and you're it's essentially jumping up each little bit of incline that you got. When I first got my own longboard, I was riding around my neighborhood, which is a bit hilly, and I had only practiced on my friend's longboard 
I had my headphones on and I was just longboarding up this very big, huge hill. And uh, of course, when you go up, you must come back down. I uh, was longboarding with my buddy Tyler and there's this hill called Sand Patch, literally about that angle going down. And uh, it was hot. I took my shirt off. Helmets are for sissies. But my mom said stupidity should be painful, so I took my helmet off. I had no shirt on. I was riding down one hill, going pretty fast. I gave it two extra kicks and got a little bit too much momentum. And what was going through my head was kind of, I have to get off this board because there was an intersection. The board got speed wobbles and the tip went that way. My back foot went that way. Uh, instead of putting my foot lightly on the ground, I stomped my foot on the ground. The way I had my foot placed against the ground, I was at an angle where I was immediately like thrown off of my board. And the board kept going and I went flying off the board and I kind of flipped over across the ground multiple times. And I ended up with a busted up lip and a, a couple of scars on my hands and wrists. And I ended up scraping my shoulder very, uh, probably that was the worst um, injury, um, was my shoulder scrape and I had elbow and knee scrapes as well took two steps, dislocated my toe, shredded my back. There was a, an etching that looked like 30. My mom nicknamed me that for like the longest time. If you look closely enough at my knuckles and my wrists, they're still very much battered and torn. Let's hold that for a second. Here we go. A major scar right here. And then there should be some discoloration on the back of that. My back, for the most part, is healed up, but that was the biggest uh, amount of skin that was removed. I ended up having to go to the hospital. I had a minor concussion and just a bunch of skin missing. I slept on my face for, I'd say, about a week until it actually started to heal, heal up. And uh, when I bumped the back of my head, when I slept the next morning, my eyes woke up and they were swollen. What you have to do is get over the fear of falling and just realize that it's a reality, that it can happen and probably will happen. You just have to learn how to get up, get up from the fall and just keep moving. Yeah, it was, it was scary getting back on the board. Just like any other thing, if you're in a car accident, it's scary getting back in the car, regardless if it was your fault or not. Once you have something traumatic like that, but like driving or doing anything else, it's something that either makes you happier, you need to do, and you just gotta get back on it. Ever had an adrenaline rush? Been snowboarding, skiing, kiss that girl? It's essentially the same concept. Your, head, your chest is racing, and you just feel so light. But once you get off, that's when it kinda sucks. If they want that feeling to keep going and going and going. It's your fork almost. You just feel the intense rush of like, anything could possibly go wrong. There could be a big rock right in front of you that you didn't see. It's a mix of emotions all at once that kind of, and it's just like, once you reach that point of speed at which you're like, there's nothing you can do except you have to get through the bottom of this hill. Um, but when you reach the bottom, it's like a huge feeling of achievement. I just feel, whenever I'm longboarding, I feel at peace with myself. Like. I don't have to try to get anything done. I don't have to try to be anything I'm not. It's just inner peace for me. It's just like, I'm content perfectly right then.